your DS for you right now. Can oh, you get really? it yourself? No, I can't reach it. You can't reach it? Well, remember yourself? You can get it now. Go get it. Do I have to? You get it yourself. Yourself, Mom. You're the best mom ever. You're welcome. So, whoa. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. We also almost had an emergency there. Um, so, living with special needs, we all do this, and we all run into problems and we need solutions for them. And there aren't always ready-made solutions for them. And a lot of us have had to come up with adaptations or solutions ourselves uh, in order to meet daily living needs. So I'm just going to go through some of the things that we have done um, that has made our life easier. And it's, this is just going to be kind of a show and tell. And Maybe it'll give you some ideas where you think, oh, I didn't think of that before. Or, oh, I could use something like that. Or maybe even, um, well, that's not exactly what we need, but I think that's given me an idea for something I can do. So I'm going to start right here with the floor protection. When John was a little bit younger, we had um, these tile floors in our kitchen and they are very hard and he would walk on the floor and and he'd fall and he'd hit right here in the middle of his head big bump the next day he'd walk again he'd fall hit the exact same spot I think we went to the ER more than once before we said uh, this has got to change we got to do something about this um, and we found on the internet, uh, a type of floor. Have you seen those pads that sometimes you put in the basement that are interlocking and that kids often use? Usually they're bright colors. Well, we found that, except that um, in a much, something a little bit nicer for your kitchen than those bright colors. And we were able to measure and cut them to the right size and put it in our kitchen, and it saved John's, John's head right here for a number of years. Uh, here's probably one of the first things that I've made for John. He was in a spica cast, as I know many of the Altrick kids are when they're younger. And you can't put them anywhere. They don't fit places. Um, and so I just went into the garage and I had an idea and I put some scrap wood together, bundled it up with some cloth, put some foam in it. I found a, a, one of those seat belts that you can use and attached that on. And this worked as a perfect chair for him. We would bring it everywhere with us to restaurants. He wouldn't fit in the, in the high chairs that they had. So we would bring this, and we'd put this right on the table with us, and he would eat with us. Uh, this is a walker that I made for John out of PVC pipe. Um, the thing about PVC pipe is that it's really cheap, lightweight, easy to get, um, and really easy to work with. It's like tinker toys. You just cut the pipe, get the connections, and push them together um, and using some glue. And uh, the, I uh, posted, I had a website where I posted how I made the walker for John. And I was amazed. People from around the world 
had looked it up and asked me for, you know, how can I make this for my child who, who could use something like this? So from the Philippines, from I think Dominican Republic, around the world. And what I like about it is just, you can make it so easily. It's lightweight. Sometimes what you buy um, is really expensive. You get it home and you realize this doesn't even work. So sometimes when you make something yourself, um, you make it to suit your needs. You make it the size you need. Um, and sometimes it works better. Uh, this is another example of, this exists in the commercial world. Um, it's actually where I kind of got the idea for our swimming pool. But uh, in the commercial world, it was, I, I don't know how much money, oh, like $500. Um, it, it's simple, it's just a stand that you can put in the swimming pool. So when you're, um, when you need to rest, you have a place to go and you can stand. And I, again, because I was really into PVC pipe at the time, I made it out of PVC pipe and stretched a, a cloth over it. And then they were able to go into the swimming pool where they couldn't reach the ground and still able to play. Speaking of swimming pools, we got to a point where we couldn't get John into the pool because it just wasn't safe. He was too heavy. Um, we couldn't, there's no way we're gonna climb up one of those rickety ladders trying to carry John uh, and bring him into the pool. And it was also difficult to get him out of the pool. Um, so I looked into lifts, commercial lifts, that crazy expensive, and besides, we have a, um, a not an in-ground pool, but an above-ground pool. So trying to find a way to get him into the pool was very difficult. So I'm gonna show you the next slide, which is a movie. This is, this is how this pool lift works. There's a winch that uh, brings him up. And once it brings him up, then you can turn the top half over the pool. And then you can lower him again into the water. And th this was made just out of materials that you can get at Home Depot. Um, we cemented the pool. I've, a good ways into the ground. I want to say we probably went 10 feet into the ground. Ice. Well, not. What's that? Ice. I'm sorry. Charles, my husband, cemented it into the ground after he labored greatly and dug very deep. <laughs> and this has been a tool that we've been using, I think this is about the fourth year now and we're still able to get John into the pool. You don't have to go big like that. You can make small modifications. Um, we had a play table that John loved to play with when he was little. Um, as he started getting a little bit bigger, uh, he needed to sit down. He couldn't just stand at it. But when he would sit at it, his legs didn't fit underneath the table. So if you, uh, right here, I put these little lifts in order to be able to lift the table up. Then we could put the chair under it and he could fit and he could still play. Pardon me? With a water table? I, I have not, but sure. That would apply to that just as easily. Um, I found that trying to get clothes on John as he was getting older was starting to get more difficult and more difficult. Um, we would dress him on the dresser, you know, when he was an infant 
a baby, getting older, changes diapers and whatnot. And we used that for, till he was maybe two, maybe getting to be three years old. But at three years old, he started to be too big for that. And yet he was still too small um, to be able to stand up and get clothes on easily. So this is a dresser. I put, um, this right here is a shelf that I put into the dresser that would pull out. So I'd pull out the shelf, and then I could have John sitting on top of the dresser with his legs hanging over so I could pull his pants up, then pull out the shelf so that he would stand on the shelf. I could pick him up and pull up his pants. No, this was a shelf. No, that He's trying to correct me. <laughs> that was different. So again, with the PVC pipe, because PVC pipe is so easy to use, um, I built a little stand for John. Um, it's, it was kind of, really, I guess it's kind of like a homemade stander, if you will. Um, I made it out of PVC pipe. If you can tell, let's see, there was a little seat that he could kind of, that would give him support and help him sit in. But it helped him to stand. It was a, sometimes, you know, the standers are really huge. And this had a small footprint to it, so I could, he could still be standing, but we, we could bring him with us. And I just put a little uh, putt-putt, a little golf club on it, so we could go putt-putting together. Um, the next slide, as he got older, I took the same concept, and instead of standing, he was sitting, but I put... Um, a little golf club onto the wheelchair so we could still go putt-putting. And we've had a lot of fun doing that together. Um, before John got his real wheelchair, a friend of ours um, modified a wheelchair, um, it's an adult wheelchair, and he found it, I think it was his mother-in-law's, and he was able to um, put some big wheels on it and put a front on it and turn it into a monster wheelchair. And then we were able to take that wheelchair and go all kinds of places. As you see here, we went fishing with it. Um, and not everything has to be utilitarian. Some things can be for fun. This was uh, Halloween one year. He's, if you heard the sound, my other son said, four, I got a Yahtzee. And this is, was actually easier to make than you would think. Um, it was a washing, washing machine box. It fit right over John. I didn't have to do anything to it because it rested perfectly on his wheelchair. And then I just decorated it with um, wrapping paper. So pretty simple, really. Uh, this was an attempt. I say attempt because it didn't work so well. I wanted to include at least one thing that didn't work because, you know, a lot of the stuff that we make, sometimes we have an idea and we think, I really think this is going to work. And then you try it out and you're like, no, nah, it didn't work. But it's worth the effort. You learn and maybe you can take it and say, well, this part of it didn't work, but I think I can do something else to, to make it work. My attempt here was uh, getting it, it's so hard to put coats on um, with the 
contracted muscles. It's hard to get the arms in. It's hard to bring it around the body. And when you're in a wheelchair, it's hard to bring it around the wheelchair. So I thought, well, I cut some extra material from the bottom. And I put a zipper in at the top. And it, it kind of worked, but it was still pretty bulky. So if anybody, maybe this will give you guys some ideas. You can say, hmm, I can take that and expand on it. And if you do, let us know, post it, so that the rest of us can maybe learn from it. Um, so how many of you have to deal with uh, BiPAP machines? And how many of you have had to deal with the masks? Have they worked perfectly for you all? Or have you had some issues? <laughs> we had some issues too. Um, this, is, this is like a, a, wi a commercial WISP mask, which maybe some of you use. In our case, and see right here? That sticks out. That's like a, it's a hard plastic right there, and it sticks out. What's that? You can pop it out? Oh, see, now I learned. I didn't know you could pop it out. And for us, when John sleeps on his side, he was getting these massive bruises. It was horrible. And um, well, anyway, that. I guess you have one solution, which is good to know. And I came up with, uh, on the left, this is a, a mask that I made for John to be able to, to hold the, the tube in place. And I brought it with me if any of you want to see it, uh, like how it looks in real life. Um, okay, now I'm going to talk about some voice activation things that are sort of working, but they're, they're not perfect yet, but I'm making moves in that, in that direction. Uh, let me see if I, yeah, let me run this for you. This is the shelf that you saw earlier. Um, when John ran it right now, he operated it using buttons. Um, when I first put it together, uh, I had it voice activated. I'm going to try and get it reworking with the voice activation. Um, I want to talk a minute about how the shelf got made, though, because I didn't make it entirely by myself. I had the idea for several years of of what I wanted, a solution that I wanted for the, the scene that we played out for you earlier, where John says, Mom, can you get me my da-da-da-da, fill in the blank. And I wanted him to be able to get his own things for himself. And so I had the idea for this shelf. And I knew how I wanted it to work, but I didn't know how to get from A to B. I, I needed help with that. And after um, a period of time, I ran across this group called um, uh, T-O-M, Tom, and Nova Labs. Tikum Olam Makers, have any of you heard of that? It's a group out of um, Israel, and they go around the whole world, and they, they try to solve problems for people with disabilities. If you've got the problem, they try to connect you up with people who like to make things and put things together, and you work together, and you try to come up with like a solution. And generally, it will happen like over a weekend, which is not a lot of time. So in our experience, they were able to help me at least get the, the idea to a point where I could take it and finish it the rest of the way. So I'm really uh, indebted to them for getting me to that point. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, 
But after making the shelf, then I was able to, um, <clears throat> uh, I, after making the shelf, then I started having ideas and ideas and ideas of, oh, what else could I do? What else could I do? And I got a little bit into the world of microprocessors and Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. And does anybody out there, has anybody heard of those? Yeah. So they're, the amazing thing about them is that they're cheap, they're available, anyone can use them, and it has endless possibilities. So um, I'm going to show you an example right here. Oops, I thought it, let me go back one. Yeah. Oops, let's see if we, can I get the speaker on here? Try and run it again and see if I get the sound. Well, how about I describe it? You can see what's going on, I, I take. But John is talking into a microphone, and he's giving a command, and the command is making the door open and close. So using voice control. Um, the, the door, the motor on the door is, came from uh, a company. We didn't, we didn't make the door opener. We used the door opener, but it can be activated by a remote control. And so instead of playing with the, the door opener itself, we played with the remote control and put a voice control onto that remote control. How are we doing with the sound? Any chance? No, no, it's not working. Get okay. No. Sorry. Okay. Uh, well, then the next slide, you're going to also have to use your imagination. Um, well, let me, let me first say that once I started thinking about the voice control, I started thinking about all the buttons that we use in our house, all the remote controls that John uses, and I started thinking, oh, what if we put voice control on that one? What if we put voice control on that one? Um, this is an example of a button pusher. It uses a solenoid, and it uh, presses the button of the elevator in our house. So you have to look really closely, but did you see the little button push and then the uh, elevator door open? Um, and just to let you know, there are button pushers commercially available. Um, but they're a little bit on the expensive side, and they usually go through Wi-Fi. So if you need it to work in an environment where you don't have Wi-Fi, then you need to go with a different solution. Okay, let's go to the next one. So this is a video, which is not going to go over very well, because it's all voice control, and you won't be able to hear it. But it's using the same voice control um, for John and able to be able to, in this video, he's opening our front door, he is ringing a doorbell, and he is uh, pressing the elevator button, going into the elevator, and then pressing the elevator button inside the elevator and going down. Could you just pull the microphone to the computer? That's what I'm looking at now. While you're looking at that, I'm going to pull this out real quick. <laughs> A college in six walks into a bar. No, I'm just. Roll 
I gave the microphone to the wrong person. Um, this is, uh, inside here is where the voice control takes place, really. I have a, a box in here, and the microphone just pulls out. And I can put this right, hang this right on the back of his wheelchair. Give me a second here. Hold this. A morosing kid walks in. No. I didn't have this fully set up here while they were looking at that. All right. While we're working on, on while we're working on that, we're going to attempt to give you a, a live demonstration. You heard that doorbell. Um, we got some doorbells to give to the neighbors, and so that John can go to his friends' houses and, you know be like a normal kid and say, hey, do you want to come play with me? Except he can't get to the door, and he can't get to the doorbell of the different houses. So we gave them a, a, a doorbell that can operate by a remote. And John, let's see if this works. The voice control is a little bit shaky, I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Control. Bob. Control. Bob. Let's try one more time. Control. Bob. It doesn't want to recognize his command for some reason. Control. Bob. Done. There we go. Control. Bob. Sometimes it thinks Bob sounds like done. So it's not perfect, but it's getting there, and it's, I think it's pretty exciting technology. Um, let me go. Did we get this to work? No? OK. Well, that's all right. You got to see a live demonstration of it anyway. Um, so the last thing I just wanted to talk about is a couple resources that, you, that are available um, that I have found. Um, the first one, Jen made it. That's mine. You can look it up. You can see some of the things that I talked about and how I made them. Um, Instructables, I get lost on that. I think it's fantastic. It's not just for um, disabilities. It's for anything that you want to make. But there are things that are helpful for in, uh, disabilities as well. I, I just ran across crackedit.org. And it's a little bit of what I was talking about, where if you don't know how to make things yourself, but you have problems that need solutions, and you just need someone to maybe help you get to that solution, I would recommend looking up uh, crackedit.org. They have a place where you can um, put, put down what you're looking for, what you need, and then other people uh, will post and come up with ideas of how to get a solution for that, which I think is pretty cool. And then again, Tom Global, which I talked about, which is uh, that organization out of Israel who does a lot of the same things, and they were instrumental in helping us get this uh, shelf to work. But that's it. Um, are there? You can, if you want to see some of these things close up, I'll be happy to show you. Or if you have any questions, yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. Right. Yep. Um, so, it'd be I think it'd be really cool to have a group where we can actually share this. Like, this is what you've done is amazing, and uh, yeah, it's, I think a lot of it's quite daunting to get into. And just the examples you've shown, I think, inspires a lot of people to try. And it'd be yeah, cool to actually be able to share it in a group. Yeah. Well, I think that's what, like, for example, the crackedit.org yeah. would be a good place for that. Um, I know that Tom Global shares a lot, of the, you know, all the projects that they have worked on, they try to share as well. Um, Instructables, again, even though it's not disability related, it is sharing how you put things together, make things. I think there's a lot, for instance, on Instructables for the Amazon Echo and uh, how you can set it up to do the own t your, your own ideas of tasks that you want done in the house. Um, we have an Echo too, which John absolutely loves because he has it in his room so it can play the music. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Oh.